Good evening, all. I wrap in with your Spider ETF stock market wrap up. And this wrap up is for the evening of Wednesday, the 31st of May, 2023. Well, we're just probably within an hour of the vote uh, set to be taken on the debt deal in the House of Representatives in America. Uh, all the key people are saying that the votes are there to get it done. It then moves to the Senate for some debate, and it'll be rough debate there. Uh, and then they're hoping for a vote as early as Friday night on that. Now, the other things you have to deal with were the jolts number came out today. And if you saw that in the beige book of the Fed, a uh, lot of weakness in the economy, all the regions. But jobs market is strong. I mean, did you see the jolts? We're back over 10 million jobs being posted out there. Uh, the turnover rate, very slow, people holding on to their jobs. Uh, obviously, it's the service industry because everything that we read, everything, it doesn't matter if it's industry, every sector, I'm not seeing any of the sections of the country picking up on that. So that becomes a bit problematic as to what happens when do people get laid off there or do they get laid off? Uh, but apparently with 10 million jobs, there's a lot of holes to be filled there. That's a problem for the Fed. You saw uh, the Fed members Harker and Jefferson come out today. Now, Mr. Jefferson's going to be the, uh, I suppose, a new Fed vice chair, I believe. Mr. Harker was speaking with him. I, I think they were together. I'm not even sure. And um, I read what they did. And to make a long story short, now they're getting cute. We're not going to call it a pause if we don't raise rates this time. Now, we don't want to use that term. We're going to call it a skip. We'll skip it because we don't want to give you the impression that we might be going down when we might have to go up after that. That's one thing. I say they all have it wrong. Looking at this jolts number, if it does what I think in the ADP number and the um, Challenger Great private corporation layoff numbers, what are they going to show? If they come in strong, it's sort of telling us the jobs report should be very strong. If it is, where do you go with that? I brought this up for one reason. This is it, folks, and I'll get right back to everything. Today's the 31st at 11.59 a.m. today. Sale is over. It's all computerized and you won't be able to get to take advantage of it. So what do you do? It's a one-year subscription. Any of my research, Spider ETF stock videos by itself, the futures video in the morning and or the full research, which covers my stock, not stock, I'm sorry, futures writing, which covers a lot of stuff, by the way, in uh, spiders, uh, an awful lot in it. And what happens in the morning subscriber video for futures. So you buy any one of those for as little as $156 and you get any of my courses. The charting course by itself is $400 value. And they all will come with, if you buy one thing, I'll throw in the other for a few weeks so you get to see what the other did. I wanna be fair when you start your courses, that, that's when I'll do that. You can give the courses away as a gift, your call. But free, nice word, all right? Move your cursor up here to take advantage. It's too late to call us and ask about it. Staff's gone and I won't honor it tomorrow. Okay, so let's take a look at Google. So I see a distribution pattern developed here. You had your spike and all of a sudden we're just waffling, if you will, at this point. You've stepped out of a trend. You have a higher high, lower low pattern on the chart. You also had a big outside day to the downside. If you've taken my outside day course, you know the importance of the high of yesterday, not today, very important. And if the market's gonna try to break it down, then one of the targets will be wherever that 18 day average comes in as a possible downside target and momentum. If you lose the embedded reading with the red line closing under 79, my God, it did it. It says be out of all longs on the last two minutes of trade, which it did. So you'd have to go up and get that number to close tomorrow only over 80 for me to say, nah, I think you got to be back in on the long side. Any number under that tomorrow, no, I'm looking right now for this. So I would be telling traders they should have been out. You might come back in by the close tomorrow. I don't know. I don't expect it. And my downside target is 118.45. That'll rise a little because that moving average is going up, not down. When we look at Schwab, same thing here. We've had a nice rally, but now your momentum's starting to arc. Pay attention. Remember, the vulnerability here is if the Fed 
She's strong jobs number on Friday. <laughs> all of these KRE, KBW, all these different things, they're, they're going to be in trouble because if the Fed goes another 25 basis points, these companies have to pay out even more to maintain the deposits because investors will go to money market funds. Like It makes it rough. And as I pointed out, and people weren't even listening, last week, if you looked how much money left a lot of banks was $40 billion, uh, quite a bit. People are moving into these funds. And if interest rates go up from here, can you imagine the, the stampede that they'll want to get there? So problems, not there yet, could be there on the close tomorrow. UGA entered full-blown bear territory now. Why? Momentum down, first close under the 18-day average. So until you get back over that number, you've opened the door for the market to potentially go as low as the lower Bollinger Band or at least hang right here. Now you can get under the 200 and the 100 day for a day or so. We'll see if it hangs or if it starts dropping from there. In XLF, the financial sector, you just heard me talk about the banks. You got down today where I think the pros covered their shorts going into the Challenger Gray and uh, uh, tomorrow's um, ADP numbers. Why? Well, you hit the Bollinger Band. First time you do it and you're not embedded, that's what I think the pros do. Same in the industrial sector, but that was back here. Then when you rally to the 18-day average, it's like when you go back to the 18-day average on a chart, it's like a pinball machine. You've When you hit these numbers, that or that, when you go here, it lights everything up. It's like hitting the reset button. And now if you hit that, then this becomes the next support again. It's exactly what occurred. In the video, when you open tomorrow, the odds favor right now that you got a problem. Why? You lost the embedded reading on the close. You're under 79. So I think that the market's opening its door up. There is a gap. Was it gonna, how much of it will it fill? Will it fill the whole thing? I don't know. But there is a gap, and as a market technician, if I looked at this and threw out the name of the video and didn't know what it was, I'd say the odds are that you try to fill the gap. In socks, are you gonna lose the embedded reading? You probably are right on the opening. Why? Because you're close to the very low of the day. The way the math works, you're going to drop a certain, uh, well, do the formula yourself, okay? I, I know the formula. And it's going to lose it on the opening unless you gap sharply higher. So I look for this market to be in trouble early on. In the home builders, well, why do you think I think they're down? They're down because market is petrified about interest rates. I, in my full research today, I, I pointed out, do you know what the 30-year conventional mortgage came in at? You know what the number is right now? 6.91%. Come on. That's monstrous in its scope. The federal government's coming out with a program. They, they floated it. Uh, we'll see if it gets approved, but uh, they want to help homeowners to not give up low rates by falling behind and those rates disappear on them. Smart move, maybe taking a 30-year mortgage, moving it to a 40-year, different things that they're trying to come up with. Yes, you pay more, but you keep the rate and you get yourself on your feet. That's the hope. XLE, look at how the market's fighting that big battle right there. GLD, market comes down to the lower band, big problems. Are you going to lose the embedded reading? Well, you're at 1989, but you closed near the low of the day. Not a given. Not a given at all. It could easily just uh, stay there. In other words, a kiss. I was going to lose the reading. I don't. And the market goes right back down. I think tomorrow you got to look at the dollar, what it does to get a feel. Look at how weak copper is. This is the canary in the mine for China and the rest of us in the industrialized sections. This is a market that in January, I thought maybe you have a market that can get up into the $4 range, a $5 a pound range, pound. Instead, it has fallen apart. And you see that in the price right here of COPX. Uh, and the reason is one country, the big, the big consumer of a China. They had absolutely no play once they lifted their COVID restrictions. The, the world thought there'd be a rush. Okay, at first it's lunar holiday. We'll see what goes on with that. Never happened. And it's a delayed reaction. Look at how this market's gone from 42 and you're down to almost 32. Okay, that's a 20 some odd uh, percent break already. BND, right up to the resistance of the 18 day average. More important, it's saying you don't want to be short anymore. 
I've been telling you that for a while. You have the embedded reading, you lose it, and you back away. So when did it lose it? If you take a look at the close yesterday, I said to you, you're probably going to lose it right on the open today. And you most certainly did. You opened, In fact, the open was the, the low of the day for all purposes. And from there, you rallied. you got to learn how the slow stochastics work. When you look at the UUP, we're in no man's land right here. Does the market lose the embedded reading or not? That's going to be the big thing. Tomorrow's a real important day for this. In FXE, you're getting down to the lower Bollinger Band by a penny. Now you got to take some money off the table and look for a bounce in that. That's all. But uh, you didn't quite hit the band one penny. I think you're close enough to call it a day. So I look at all this. It's interesting. It's fun right now. And it's going to get dangerous over the next 48 hours between the Senate vote that I think will be coming up, uh, the two jobs numbers tomorrow, the ADP and the Challenger Gray, and then right after that, the monster, the jobs report Friday morning. I'm I. Rapstein. You have yourselves a great evening. I'll see you first thing in the morning tomorrow. Take care.